Okay, we're getting ready to paint this apartment. Okay, it has some furniture in it. So the first thing we do is we move all the furniture out into the middle of the room the best that we can. We take off all the electrical covers. I take out the AC vents. All right. What I do is I put them in the tub with hot water so that they start to clean up. I do the same thing with the cover plates. This way we're able to clean them all up before we put them back in. I take off the hardware for the doors. Okay, I remove the shelving out of the closets. Okay, all the shelving got removed. I keep all the hardware, everything that I'm going to put back, put it in the drawers. Same thing in the bathroom, I remove everything. This makes for a much cleaner job. Go through now and do your patching and your caulking so that you can start painting tomorrow. So that's what I did today. Came in and removed everything, prepped everything, getting ready to paint so that I can paint tomorrow. Okay. We're gonna be doing some work in the kitchen, not much. Okay, like I said, do your patching. There's some patching on some corner bead around the outlets. Someone did a little job there around that. I don't know what they did, but I wanna try and make it decent. She doesn't want me to remove any of these wires. I really wish she would let me. Okay. All right, today was prep. Tomorrow, we start to paint. Okay, now we're getting ready to start painting. Put out my cloth. Got my bucket. I poured it out of the five into the one gallon can. And now, when you dip, that's as far as you wanna go into the paint. If you're going further than that, you're gonna have a mess. That's the proper way to do it. Okay, then, Starting in the closet because I can reach it. Then I'll do the small areas. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick that I use so I don't have to use a ladder to cut in. Okay. See how I angle my brush, get it right up there and then go flat so that you can get a nice part of it so that your roller will just go up to that. Okay? All right, I got a lot to do, so I'm gonna keep cutting in, and then I'm gonna show you my trick when I get to the bedroom, because the ceiling's higher. Okay, also, when you're doing your inside corners, do each side, just like you did the rest. Put it flat once you get there. So you're coming out wide enough to be able to get close to the wall with your roller. Same with the other side. Okay. Now when you roll, you're gonna be able to get to it without going and hitting the other wall, which will cause some runs or other marks that you don't want to be present when your painting is done. Also, you see all these holes in here, I'm in the closet. I'm not patching them because the shelves are going to be going back up in the same spot. There were wire shelves in here. I removed all the brackets 
painting everything to make it easier to paint the walls and then I'll put everything back in. All right, let me get finished. Also, even though you've taken the plates off the outlets, you can do a couple things. You can tape it. This happens to be a switch or do just like you do in the corners when you're cutting it. Make it big enough going all the way around the outlet or the switch so that you don't have to get close to it with the roller. This will help you to get quicker and get the job done efficiently, properly, and have a beautiful job when you're done. Also against the moldings, I like to go ahead and get this done because it doesn't matter right now if I get any on the trim or not. But get far enough away so you're not gonna hit it with the roller. Okay, then you're gonna be able to get close enough and not hit it. Because when I go to do the trim, that's when I do my extra sharp cutting. Also, when you have your trim and your switch so close, you might as well go ahead and paint it so that you don't have to worry about if your roller fits in between there or not. This is part of your cutting, okay? I'll be able to roll down to the top and then roll the bottom and not have to worry about my roller fitting here, whether I'm going to hit the switch or I'm going to hit the trim. All right, got a lot more to do. Okay, now I'm going to show you my little trick. Okay. I get this little handle that'll hold my brush and it'll screw on to a, well, this happens to be like a small dust pan or small br um, broom handle. It's short so I can deal with it. Don't have to have a big long handle while I'm trying to do this. But using this, I don't have to have a ladder. Okay, you put it in, you tap both sides of that. Now when you go up, you just push it in and start to cut in. It does a beautiful job. And I don't have to get on the ladder. Let me show you again. Tap both sides, get enough off. Bring it up. And there you go. Nice cut in. And now I don't have to use a ladder and I can run around this room. All right, let me get going. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to cut it in. If you don't wanna take the cover plates off, I didn't because of this one, I didn't. Because everything was hooked up to this and I wasn't sure, you know, if I would mess something up, I am doing it. So now what I like to use is an angle brush. You don't have to, but for cutting in nice and sharp, this is what you do. You put your point in, over, away from the direction you're going to move. And this way you're able to manipulate, manipulate the brush one way or the other to get the tip closer to the object that you are cutting in. So first put it against the wall turn and look how nice and sharp that cut in is it's beautiful perfect okay let me show you again you put the point up and the edge right where you're cutting in okay and that's how you cut it in without getting any paint on the cover plates. And I cut in enough that I could roll around. 
The only thing you have to worry about now is any splatter from the roller getting on it. But that's why you always keep a rag with you. One of the most important tools for a painter is a rag because things happen. All right, I still got a lot to do. Let me keep going. Okay, now we're gonna get rolling. Now, I like to put a lot of paint on my roller. And the first thing I do is I get it on the wall and I push it over to my left, okay? And then I come down and I've left a big smear of paint on the wall. Now I'm rolling back to where I originally was because before I started the video, I had already done this area over here. So I'm going up to it, always working into the wet. So I'm picking up more paint as I go, as I'm rolling through here. Okay, now I'm overlapping the, what I did before. And now I do what's called a back roll. And I roll back out all the way to the left of what I just did. And it's spreading the paint out nice and evenly. Okay, and giving me good coverage. Okay, and work your way all the way back through. Okay, now I've covered all that and I get one more roll over. Okay, all right. Now that's what you call a back roll. You're gonna push your paint out, roll it all the way into what you have just done. Then you back roll it one more time, back over, and it gives you nice and even paint. The wall looks really good, all right? I know it's white over white, but there was a lot of marks on the wall and it's coming out really nice. But you need to learn how to do a back roll. It's very important. It gives you a nice, even coverage with your paint and you're gonna be able to paint like a professional. All right, I got a lot more to do. I gotta get going. Okay, what I forgot to show you when I start with the paint roller like I showed you, going there and I come down. When I do my cut in, I don't cut in at the baseboard. Okay, I cut in around the jams, I cut in the top, I cut in around all the switches and outlets. Okay, because what I do when I'm rolling is I bring that roller all the way down to the baseboard and it cuts it in, okay? Because I'm going to be going, I am going to be painting the baseboard. So I don't have to cut it in with the flat paint because I'm gonna use a semi-gloss down on the bottom. So it's not gonna matter because I'm butting it right there and then it's going to be, I don't have to waste my time doing the cut in at the baseboard is what I'm trying to say. I don't have to waste my time because this paint with the roller is going to cover that up. And then all I do is when I cut my trim in, I just do a fine cut and save a lot of time from cutting in the flat paint at the baseboard when it's not necessary. Okay, that was just another tip I wanted to give you to help you save some time and get your paint job done quickly. Okay? All right, again, I got a lot to do. I gotta keep going. Okay. Now, the walls are all painted. I don't know if you can see the difference in here. It's a big difference. Did in this uh, vanity area and the closet. If you go back and look at what the closet looked like, it was pretty bad. This is all one coat, okay, with a back roll. 
one coat with a back roll because I'm going over white so it covers well. If you're changing color, then it'll probably take two coats depending on the paint you buy. But this is looking good. All right, the master bedrooms, walls are all painted, the flat paint. Tomorrow I gotta start the living room and everything. Then I'm gonna do the trim in the bathrooms. All right, that's it for today.